liberation, freedom, myth, or reality? How can I be free and still be bound? I'm just a girl, a black girl. They say black girl magic, right? But I wonder. What is magical about this black girl? In this place, I see different shades of black. I see a partial preference due to the color of our skin. This system, these systems unconsciously biased, base performance and perception. The race, the faces and the fates all determine our fate in these systems. These systems claim to protect against the threat, but many times they are the threat. How can I trust these systems that protect and threaten? And the winner of the best actress in leading role is Jane Asolo Kuku. Jetisola, you're going to your initial accommodation now. Here's your uh, initial accommodation. If you've got any problems, uh, call this number. Um, please, what's your name? Leo. Leo, what if I need to pee or use the bathroom? There's a public bathroom down the end of the hall. Do you know how long I'm going to be here for? I can't help with that. A year? Maybe two? You get used to it. Good night. Another prison. These walls don't talk, do they? These guarded buildings have bounded me. All I wanted was life. Life. Life itself. So I fled, hoping to leave. But my quest for life has bounded me in this sanctuary. Hello? Hello? Can anybody hear me? Help! 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 Help me, please! Room number 432. Breakfast. I'm still here. I can feel the horror of this sanctuary, this prison, as I watch my beauty dwindle. The pounding knocks sometimes sound like freedom. My heart panics at each sound of their feet. The men in uniforms are trained for mind battles. I also wear uniforms. A prisoner's uniform in this decorated prison. I am alone and lonely, shot from the real world. My world has become a battlefield. 
How long do I have to keep fighting for this freedom? I fight daily. Fight. Fight to be seen. To be heard. To be noticed. All I want is love. Love. The gateway to freedom. My name is T.J. Sunimi Olua Falumi Olakoto. I am a monoracial black female immigrant actor. I play the role of Jadi in this film. Jade. Jade. Can I get you some water? No. We are trying to help you the best we can, but you insist on not saying anything. talk now. It's okay. I'll check back to see if... Just let me go. Let me go. We want to. But you need to give us the answers we require before a decision is made. Or would you like to go back to Nigeria? No. Then we wouldn't want to waste our time. You have to say something. We can't just let you go. Tea or coffee? No. Okay. I'll check back in five minutes. Chade is a human being just like me and every other person in the world. You know, she's in her 20s and right now she's presently trying to seek safety in a foreign country. Chade is scared and she's traumatized by her past and you know how that can be very shaky. Scary, well. Jaddy, you have to say something. Jaddy, are you ready to talk now? Yes. I am now going to ask you some questions. If there's any question you do not understand, please ask and I will repeat myself. What is your preferred language of interview? English. Please let me know if you feel unwell at any point during this interview. Are you fit and ready to be interviewed? You will need to say that in words. Yes. Why have you come to the UK? Isn't this obvious? That's a very common question. See, there's something special about Nigerian millennials. You should know, you know. Chade is in her 20s. She's a Nigerian millennial, just like me. <laughs> Let me tell you something about Nigerians that you don't know. Nigerians are trained to adapt to any situation we find ourselves in. And I'm going to back it up with a fact. You see, in 2017, Farida Abdul Karim wrote on the website that Nigerians are some of the happiest people in the world. <laughs> well, that was 2017. From research, could be right, suffering and smiling continues to be our mantra. And that managing is a watchword of every Nigerian that continues to shoulder the effect of corruption in their daily lives. So why then did Jadi come to the UK? I'm scared. I'm afraid I'll die. I left everything. Everything to be here. What do you mean by everything? All of them. Who were they? My mother. Daniel. Who is Daniel? My ex-husband. What happened? She left. She left everything, including her mother. <laughs> the one thing you need to know about this daddy's mother is that she is very ambitious. Like mother, like daughter, Abby. Eh? Well, that's not even the thing. That's not where I'm going. Jadis' mother is 
verbally abusing and highly entitled. Oh, look at you looking at me like it's not possible. Oh, oh. <laughs> Wait there, let me give you the full gist. We have lots of African mothers like this that just encourage you to stay in a, in a verbally and domestically abusive home. And you know when you tell them your husband beat you, you know what they say? Stay here. Sorry. And here, yeah, and they just make up a lot of things. And some even go as far as gaslighting you. And they, they remind you of the pain and the agony they went through. You know, before they gave birth to you, while they raised you up, blah, blah, blah. Just for you to succumb. Ah, oh, African mothers. Enough is enough. Uh -uh. Can you tell me more about Daniel? What does he do? He's a businessman. Where? Abuja. Where? Where we stayed. Is that a state or? Abuja is the federal capital territory. So why have you come to the UK? There's no school to learn. Why here. haven't you gone to other states? These people are everywhere. It's people, it's family. They have people everywhere. They are very powerful. I know all their secrets. They'll find me and he'll kill me himself. What about your father? He's dead. Our father is dead. Relax. <laughs> what I mean is, this man is dead to both Jaddy and her mother. Who do you expect? A single mother. You now see why this woman has a stronghold on this girl, eh? Let me explain. See, when Jaddy's mother gave birth to Jaddy, Jaddy became her dream. She became her ambition. And when it was time for Jaddy to pay her dues, you know what she did? She left. Ah ah, traitor. See, let me tell you something. This woman was living vicariously through Jaddy. You don't know what they say. Uh -huh, exactly. It is what it is. Where is your father? I do not have a father. I have never met him. I have never met him. Have you tried looking for him? Why are you asking me this question? I've told you everything I know about him, and you're asking me this same question. Let's take a ten minute break. I found someone to love. Someone who touched me. His touch was like thorns that bruised. His words stung. Ugly, unworthy, filthy, nothing, nothing. You are nothing. That's all you ever be, nothing. Then, with false remorse, he says, I am sorry. And it touches me again and again. But I need love. I need love. I want stability. Look me in the eye and tell me you will stay. Love me. Love me through your eyes. Heal me with your touch. Cleanse me with your gentle touch. I am lonely. I'm empty. My soul is dark. Fill me with your light. I need you. I am looking for me. I was suicidal. I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. Take your time. And Daniel became more violent towards me. stated previously, let me remind you that the UK government will not contact Nigeria about you. We are trying to help you, okay? Okay. Good. Now, 
easy to explain why Daniel's family are powerful enough to kill you anywhere in Nigeria and why your mum also seems to support them. Daniel's father is a high-ranking police officer at the federal level. They have aides all over the nation. And Daniel gets away with a lot of things. What things? Everything dirty and deadly. Drugs, fraud, human trafficking. Daniel and his father? Yes. And your mum? She wants to run for office at the federal level. That has always been our ambition. So she also does the... No. She only wants their acceptance and endorsement. That's the only way you win elections in Nigeria. Any evidence? Yes. I'm going to ask you one last question, and I need you to answer this carefully and correctly. Did your mum force you to marry Daniel as a means for her to gain her grounds in politics? Yes. Asylum seekers and refugees face additional stressors when they migrate to another country. And these stressors include language, cultural barriers, detention, discrimination, and they face enormous losses like family, friends, status, homeland, financial assets, financial stability, and community. While waiting for a decision from the Home Office, Jade joins the dance theater community and she became very active. This made her a bit happy and it lightened her heart. She was also well commended by a director and this rekindled her hope of becoming a celebrated artist. However, when it was time for the community's major showcase, she faced an unapologetic discrimination as she didn't fit the casting criteria as well as the industry stereotypes because she is brown skinned. She is black. She is a female. And also an immigrant. I was once a child who dreamt of soaring as high as the eagle in the sky. I thought I was the eagle. I saw myself as a queen surrounded by subjects. I imagined my dolls clearing the pathway before me as they throw roses on the floor. <laughs> Just like the scenes in Coming to America. I knew no boundaries. I thought I was beautiful. It felt whole. I was not bothered. I was so unbothered that I dreamt. Yes, I dreamt. But I dreamt in my lonely world. As I blossomed, I was used to being watered. I was a budding rose growing on fertile soil. 
the voice of comfort, my mother, watered me, but the voice of comfort slowly became the voice of scorn. I cried. Oh, I still cry. Where is little Jaddy? The gathered rain of my tears hasn't gone away. Little Jaddy cannot play. But what if the communities that are meant to be instrumental in one's healing does the opposite? You see, I, alongside many immigrants, have faced several levels of discrimination based on our race, gender, status, skin color. The list goes on and on. Come to think of it, what if Jari is a real human being living in this community? and is constantly living in fear, threatened by these same communities, traumatized by her past at the same time. What if she is still being threatened? I am wounded, not crushed. Sometimes confused but not quitting. I'm continually oppressed but I'm hopeful. I've embraced my essence. You see, my essence is a mystery waiting to be unraveled. I am the art I long to make. I am divinity wrapped in humanity. Even though being black is considered minority. However, my minor ethnicity does not define me. My essence can't be confined by the stereotypes of these systems. I have been waiting, waiting for freedom, for someone to open the door. My two feet have become weary from waiting at the door for these systems to come through. But instead, these systems have locked the doors to survival. I want to thrive, but I need to survive. But how do I thrive without surviving? Should I break the locks? Without minding the consequence of being an angry black woman. Or rather, continue to wait and hope for the big break that never comes. Should I endure the outbreak this way brings? The pain, the pain that keeps on breaking. How do I heal from this level of pain? I want to break free. Break boundaries, break barriers, break into who I am, but how do I break through the glass ceilings?